I started one-to-one -one discipleship about nine years ago. It was with a lady who just accepted Christ, and she was facing some marital problems. I just felt this burden to walk with her and to help her to know Christ more, as I believe only Jesus can help her. I struggled for a while because her house was about 40 minutes away without traffic jam. But at last, I gave in to the prompting of God and made arrangements to meet her once a week after I dropped off my children at school. You can imagine the morning traffic, right? Sometimes it took me about one and a half hours to two hours to get to her house. But I look forward to the breakfast we took turns buying and eating together as we talk. She'll share her problems with me and I'll try to give godly advice and to lead her to the Word of God. She told me that before I called her, she was just thinking to herself, I don't understand the Bible. If only someone can come and explain it to me. She was shocked when I called her, as we really don't know each other that well then. I believe it was God's appointment for us. We met almost every week, except during school holidays, for about six years. In the first two years, she don't attend church due to various reasons. But later on, she came to FGA with her son. Slowly, she grew in her knowledge of God and learned to seek God on her own. And I can see God moving in her life as she shared testimonies of what God did for her. It was a slow process, but the satisfaction for me is to see her drawing closer to God and to depend on God rather than man. I can speak into her life because we have become friends for life. Even after we stop meeting physically, we still connect with each other regularly and to continue life's journey together. Beginning this year, I started to disciple a lady via WhatsApp video call. With the advancement of technology, we have no excuse because of distance, as this lady lives in another country. She was formerly from FGA, but after her husband passed away last year, she went back to her home country. She was in depression and loneliness and was on a lot of psychiatric medications, so she needed someone to talk to. She started calling me at night because she can't sleep and she'll share her problems with me. After a while, I told her that instead of focusing on all the problems, some of which have no solutions, we should just focus on God's Word and build ourselves up to handle and overcome all the problems. So we started to do Bible study, starting from the book of Genesis. She'll read two to three chapters each day, and we'll discuss it at night. At first, she felt that God's Word is dry and difficult to understand. But as I explained it to her, she began to understand and to enjoy the Word of God. Now, when she is depressed or facing a problem, she will first turn to God in prayer instead of taking medicine or calling people for comfort. And God has been faithful in answering her prayers and watching over her. Discipling people is not easy and takes up a lot of time. But the reward is great as we see them grow spiritually in their knowledge and intimacy with God. What we need is a listening ear, a caring heart, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to be a Bible dictionary in order to do Bible study with someone as long as we have a fair knowledge and understanding of God's Word and don't act like we know it all, we can always learn and grow together. Discipleship is also sharing life together. So pray and ask God to send someone to disciple you or ask God to send someone for you to disciple. Good morning brothers and sisters. Please allow me to share my personal journey from being a disciple to become a discipler. As a young Christian, I was a reluctant disciple. I find that it's a waste of time in question what I can learn from a small group setting with a people that I just know. But my HF leader, Brother Lincoln, was very persistent and he will line up small group studies to equip us. Though I was reluctant, I obediently attend all these small group studies. The reason I was reluctant is because I was afraid to be real. That means I have to reveal what is hidden behind my facade. 
and at the same time to be wrong, afraid to reveal to others my vulnerable side. I remember vividly as a young Christian, I was invited to attend a small group studies called Lead Like Jesus. At that time, I asked myself, how can I ever be able to lead like Jesus? And of course, I was reluctant to attend. After relentless persuasion by Brother Lincoln, eventually, Cindy and myself attended it together. During this Lead Like Jesus small group study, I learned about humility, about patience, about serving as a servant. Humility, patience and serving as a servant was never in my mind or my vocab. How can I be humble as an owner of an engineering company? People will gobble me and I'll be very vulnerable to my staff, to my supplier, to my customer. But I learned otherwise that being humble does not mean that I'll be a doormat. All my mentors have shaped me and helped me to mold me. I felt that there is this deep sense of transformation in me. And my relationship with my family and others start to improve. Therefore, having reaped all this benefit, I sincerely felt that I have to do likewise to help others. So I started this small group studies, hoping that someone will reap the benefit. And in the process, become a better person and pray that he may pass it on to others. And last year, I had the privilege to walk with a group of 10 brothers going through the Mentoring Better Paradigm by Edmund Chan on Zoom. We all enjoyed ourselves very much and through the seven months together, I managed to have meals with some of them who is living near me and through it, our relationship grew stronger. Brothers and sisters, Rick Warren say, discipleship always begins with a decision. Spiritual growth is not automatic. It's not how you have been a Christian. It takes an intentional commitment and you must want to grow. And you must make an effort to grow and persist in growing.